So when we're solving a related race problems, we essentially proceed as we've done with these previous examples we've been talking about in this lecture. We're given a word problem, we come up with a relationship between the quantities, we interpret in the verbal description of the problem what the derivatives of any of these quantities are that we've introduced, and then we try to solve for the rate of change of one of the remaining quantities, so the derivative of a remaining quantity. And so that means we're going to have to be able to solve some equation for the missing rate of change. And this turns out to be really just an algebra problem. And so I just want to focus on that aspect of a related rates problem before we get into the full-blown related rates problems, which are the topic of the next section. So let's look at an example. We've got a relationship between x and y. Sine of x plus cos of y is equal to 1. So this is our relationship. We know at a particular moment when x is pi by 6 and y is pi by 3, we know the derivative of x with respect to t is 2. So we have that x is related to y and we know how fast x is changing. Can we determine how fast y is changing? And in fact we can. What we do is we start with this relationship. And then we differentiate it. And when we differentiate it, we get a relationship between their derivatives. So we differentiate with respect to t. So we're going to go d by dt of the left is equal to d by dt of the right. So the derivative of sine of x is cos of x dx dt. And then the derivative of cos of y is negative sine of y dy dt. And the derivative of the constant is 0. We know dx dt. We know x and y. So at this particular moment when x is pi by 6 and y is pi by 3, the derivative is this. So what we know is that we can plug in x equals pi by 6, y equals pi by 3, and dx dt when, at the precise moment when x is pi by 6 and y is pi by 3, that is equal to 2. Into the expression above, and we get that cos of pi by 6 times dx dt, that's times 2, minus sine of pi by 3 times dy dt is equal to 0. Cos of pi by 6, that is root 3 over 2. Sine of pi by 3, that's root 3 over 2. And, oh, notice we could essentially cancel off those two quantities because we're equal to 0, so I could divide through the entire expression by root 3 over 2, and that means that dy dt when x is pi by 6, y is pi by 3 is equal to, so the 2 can come over as a negative 2 divided by negative 1, so that's equal to 2. And so there is our rate of change in y with respect to t it is also 2. The rate of change in x with respect to t is 2, and so the rate of change in y with respect to t at that precise moment is also 2. Okay, let's look at one last example for solving for this unknown rate. So here we've got our relationship again between x and y. I want to determine the derivative of x with respect to t when I know the derivative of y with respect to t at a particular moment when y is equal to 0. So we start with our relationship. So the idea here is we've got our relationship between our quantities. And now we differentiate with respect to t. So we differentiate this relationship and find a relationship between the derivatives. So that's x cubed derivative with respect to t of x cubed plus y squared minus xy is equal to the derivative of 8. So this is 3x squared times dx dt. We're going to use the chain rule because I'm differentiating with respect to t here. Plus 2y dy 
dt. And then I'm going to have to use the product rule in the next bit. So minus the derivative of the first, dx dt times y, plus the first times the derivative of the second. There's a negative sign out front there. So minus x times dy dt. And that is equal to the derivative with respect to t of 8. So that's 0. Now I notice that I've got some dx dt's in a couple of terms. So that's 3x squared minus y times dx dt plus 2y minus x dy dt. And that's equal to 0. So let's call this equation star because I can refer to it in a, in a moment. So now what do I want to do? Well, I've got now this relationship between their derivatives. So I'd like to know, if I know the value of dy dt is 8, when y is equal to 0, what is dx dt? So I just need to plug all of the known stuff into this equation and figure out what the unknown is. There's only one slight problem. When y is 0, I can plug 0 in for y. I can plug 8 in for dy dt. But I have these x's that I still don't know what their value is. So I need to come up with what x is when y is 0. So let's just jot down our knowns. Our knowns are that y is equal to 0, dy dt is equal to 8, and x is equal to, well, I don't know what that is, so I better find it. So if I know y is 0, what is x? Well, I go back up to the relationship between x and y and say, well, I know that x cubed plus y squared, so that's 0 squared, minus x times y, which is 0, is equal to 8. So that means I know that x cubed is equal to 8. Ah, so I know that x is 2. So now I know x is 2, I know y is 0, and I know dy dt is 8. So I know all of the information I need to plug it into star. So we plug our knowns into star, and I get it's 3 times 2 squared minus 0 times dx dt plus 2 times 0 minus 2 times dy dt, which is 8, and that's equal to 0. So we get 12 dx dt minus 16 is equal to 0, or in other words, 12 dx dt is equal to 16, or dx dt is equal to 16 twelfths, or 4 thirds. So the derivative of x with respect to t is 4 thirds. All right, so that's it for this review section. In the next section, we're going to go through full-blown related rates problems, and you'll see how each of these three things that we've reviewed over this review lecture, each of these three things comes in at a certain stage of solving a related rates problem. So if you go and you're working on those related rates problems from the next section, and you start to get stuck again, and you're trying to figure out how to proceed, and you're really getting bogged down, come back to this lecture and go through these three steps again to make sure you understand the essentials of how to take the verbal description of the problem, translate it into a diagram, and then extract the appropriate quantities, how to interpret the rate of change given in the question as a derivative of a quantity, and then how to solve for the missing or unknown rate given that you have all these other knowns at a particular moment in time. All right. Well, thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again next time.